Hello, furniture refinishing friends. I'm Shannon with Black Sheep House. Today's video is a little different. I'm always doing things on a budget, but today is an extreme budget flip. I wanted to do a video that would work for anybody that you could just not worry about it eating up all your profits if you're trying to flip something for the first time. Uh, if you're just decorating your college dorm or your like new pad, I just wanted it to be so inexpensive that anybody could do it. So I really, really challenged myself to stay on a budget so that anybody can do this project. Let's get started. I got this 70s style little side table for free from my friend. And if you've been refinishing furniture for a while, you know that your friends will give you free stuff like all the time if you start posting on social media that you refinish furniture. I found this cleaner at the dollar store. It's Palmolive, um, like the Oxy cleaner. And man, it is the best degreasing stuff I have ever used. It is like, it will get your stuff squeaky clean. You do need to um, rinse it with water afterwards. So I usually just take a cloth with water after I wash it with the soap and um, wipe the whole thing down again to remove any soap that's left behind but man it is squeaky clean. You're gonna need some 80 grit sandpaper. You can buy a pack of this at um, Walmart or Home Depot for around three to four dollars and if you start with the 80 grit it works its way if you just use the same piece um, it will work its way down to a smoother, like 220 type feel as the um, as you continue to use that one piece. And so you can actually use just one piece of sandpaper or one type of sandpaper the whole time. Um, on the edges, like my piece is from the 70s, so it's a veneer, which means it's not solid wood. It's about the thickness of a penny, maybe even thinner of like a layer of wood on top of um, particle board and so if you sand too much on the edges is usually where that happens you can sand through the veneer and it just makes the stain look a little uneven and stuff it's not impossible to you know get around but you just want to be careful I will say that the edges like the actual rim of the top is solid wood so that's great you can sand that on my piece, it's solid wood. Sometimes the veneer is actually on the sides as well. So you just wanna be careful sanding it. You can use a household vacuum if you don't have a shop vac to sweep up the dust. Um, or you, if you're outside, you could just kind of brush it off with a broom or you know, clean it with a damp cloth. The next thing we're gonna be doing is a taupe wash. And we're basically treating paint like a stain but paint is too thick to be used as a stain so you need to water it down this is pretty common in the furniture painting community we do washes all the time in different colors white wash is very common taupe wash i don't see a ton of people doing it but i am seeing more and more people start to use it i ended up um, doing a little too light uh, it was too much water on this mixture the first time around and then I ended up having to add more paint and I'm just using a paint sample from the hardware store you could really use any brand I think PPG at Home Depot is the cheapest so if we're trying to keep this makeover under $15 or so you can use PPG I use a paper towel to apply it or you could use a sponge um, you could use some old t-shirt. Like I said, you see it's too watery and it's like barely showing up. So I had to add more paint. The idea behind using it, and you can't really see it in this video, that the how orange the wood actually is. And the idea behind the taupe wash is that it's going to camouflage and cancel out the orange colors just like when you apply makeup it hides redness and discoloration so it just kind of makes everything look nice and smooth and modern i end up doing two coats total of the whitewash sorry taupe wash 
but you do have to wait in between the coats for it to dry. I know some of you might ask me what sheen paint to get, and this is a flat paint. So most sample paints come in flat, as far as I know. There may be some that come in a sheen, but most of them are just flat. But this is a flat paint sample that I got from Lowe's. I'll list the color, and then I'll list a couple of other colors in different brands that I um, that are a good match to the color that I used. But you're going for like a taupe color. And I just wipe it on. I try to go with the grain, and I do make strokes all the way across from the from one side to the other so that it if there is like a thicker you know paint left behind it will go with the direction of the grain and and blend in with it i did need to remove the hardware on this piece so that i could paint it you could also just paint the hardware on there as well a lot of people will do that especially if you're using a spray paint like I'll be using that is for metal, wood, plastic, and so on. So my first layer of paint wash has had a chance to dry, and now I'm gonna go in with a second layer, and it's 50% paint, 50% water. Remember that one-to-one -one ratio that ended up being the sweet spot, and I'm going to apply from one end to the other, nice long, sh you know, sort of sweeping motions, so that it goes with the grain. See that grain going parallel? And I know it looks a little thick on here, but you guys saw the pictures from the beginning of the video. It soaks into the wood grain really nicely and looks great. So I usually just do the top and then I'll go around the edges. And if there's any drips or anything, I can clean those up and then also it applies it to the edges. This dries really quickly, but I am gonna wait until I finish painting the bottom and then clear coat the whole thing together. Clear coating this top is crucial. I was just thinking like, okay, everybody has aluminum foil or you can buy it at the dollar store. I think you can also buy um, painter's tape at the dollar store too. They, it might be called masking tape. So if you wanna do that, by all means, go for it. Um, I just decided to use the aluminum foil because it did two things for me. It, you know, taped off that line on the bottom and then also protected the top that I just worked so hard on before um, painting. You could also do this makeover in reverse order and paint the bottom first and then do the paint wash, you know, just there's, there's really so many different ways of doing something. And I hope that when you watch my videos and you watch other people's videos that you realize like, hey, you know what? They did it this way, but I could probably do it a little differently and it'll still work out because usually that's the case. When you are spray painting, you will want to do short little strokes that go um, just kind of like little blasts of paint. So I'm pushing and then releasing, pushing on, and then releasing, pushing on, and then releasing. A lot of like beginners will push down the button and then just go back and forth, like keeping a continuous spray, and that is actually improper for spray painting, and it will give you kind of a streaky finish. So you might not be able to tell, but I'm definitely going on, off, on, off with the button, and that's giving me a nice finish. You'll do two coats of the spray paint and you wanna do the two coats within a couple of hours because if you wait too long, the spray paint will start to oxidize and it'll make your finish kind of bubbly. That also goes for putting on a top coat. You'll wanna do it within a two hour window or like a three hour window before the paint starts to oxidize. Otherwise you have to wait 48 hours. You can read the instructions on the back of the can um, but that's usually how it works. I'm using a paint on top coat, but it's cheaper. It's about $4 for a can of spray on top coat, clear coat. And so if you're just really trying to keep your costs all the way down, but I'm using clear coat all the time and I have this in my garage. So I just went ahead and used what I had instead of buying the spray paint clear coat. Either one will be great, but I do recommend a matte finish. 
I prefer matte finishes. They are more forgiving to the eye when you're looking at a piece. It's still going to have some sheen to it. You just, your furniture that you paint is always going to have a little bit of a sheen to it. Um, even the matte clear coats. So that's just the way I go. I will say that when you're doing the top of this piece, you'll want to do a couple of coats if you're the kind of person who is hard on furniture or you have kids or you're you know throwing a lot of parties where people are going to have lots of drinks and stuff. I just did one coat of clear coat, kind of a thicker coat, and that works fine for me. I am using a zebra paintbrush to apply the top coat. That is my favorite type of paintbrush, but you could use any synthetic brush. Um, about a two inch angled brush is the easiest to work with in my opinion. You can also use a foam roller. You could use a sponge or like I said, if you bought the spray on clear coat, you don't even have to paint anything with a brush. So. Here's a reminder of the before. The 70s side table turns boho, cool, modern side table. I think that this turned out really great. This combination sells really well and is very popular right now. Hope you like this video. Like, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.